Dr. Doreen Grandpiche is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grandpiche. Dr. Grandpiche. Dr. Doreen Grandpiche. Dr. Doreen Grandpiche is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Somebody wrote in, and this is pretty broad, but they said medication, yes or no. <laughs> uh, I mean, great question, great question. So, I am a medication yes person, and that doesn't mean that everyone needs to be a medication yes person. But as you know, when I was a scientist back in the, my my doctoral days. Uh, everything that we studied in terms of therapies, uh, there were studies that showed that the result was always improved if you ha also had some sort of help from medication. So, for example, depression. You can do uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. You can do a variety of different types of therapies. But if you add a uh, antidepressant medication, then the results are tremendously better. Uh, ADHD, same thing, et cetera, et cetera. So almost all uh, kind of uh, problems, uh, you have a solution that's a little bit easier and faster to get to when you look at medication. Now, that being said, it's a really important thing because we're dealing with autism, that you differentiate, you, you really understand what medication does. Medication, separate from supplements, right? Medication uh, reduces the, the symptoms. It doesn't alter the cause. And that's a really important thing. It's kind of like when you have a headache, you take Tylenol. And the Tylenol will uh, basically disable you from feeling pain. And that's what happens. The, the thing that's causing the pain is still there. Um, so with autism, I think it becomes really, really important that if you do decide to take medication, you continue to pursue uh, reasons why things are happening anyway to begin with so i think like for instance anxiety is a good one like a lot of our kids experience anxiety um and or they have obsessive compulsive types of behaviors and they respond tremendously well when they are given a ssri medication selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor medication they do incredibly well a lot of their obsessive needs are are kind of reduced pretty significantly but then over time it kind of maybe becomes really important to ask why does this individual experience anxiety? What are some ways I can give them to calm themselves so they don't have anxiety? And so those are some of the things that are very, very important, I think, with medication to realize. Now, the other thing I want to say about it is that I've had the experience with kids over the years of having been a provider for thousands of kids that sometimes kids on the spectrum will have kind of a reverse effect with medications. So like when a medication is supposed to do one thing, it'll do another thing with our kids. So for instance, clonidine is a medication that is very calming and puts you to sleep essentially. And sometimes with our kids, I've had children where clonidine will make them hyperactive. So keep that in mind. Like our kids are a little bit biochemically different and so it becomes really, really important to, uh, you know, test things out, go slow, uh, make sure that you're under the care of a physician who's watching over you so that you can uh, do the right thing. Don't listen to other people who are, your child is different from your friend's child. Uh, what works for your friend's child may not work for you. These are some things that are super important. And uh, yeah, I think those, and also like one of the things you can do and not always in medicine, but with medicine, you can do like tests that will determine very objectively if the child has improved. 
because you don't want the improvement to be like a doctor's opinion. There has to be some consensus on the fact that things are actually getting better. Absolutely. I, I love that you're talking about using it in conjunction with other things. Just like we were saying about diet yeah. before, you would never no. just do diet and you would never just do medications. I I just want to add on to the fire, though, that, uh, you know, you said make sure that you're working with a physician who's going to work with you and make sure that they're reputable. I have seen I'm sure you have too, Dr. Grampiche, where they just want to prescribe the medicine and say, and that's done. That's the prescription. I gave it to you. Your problem should be over now. They don't want to yeah. hear if they're having a reaction to it. They don't want to hear if you if they if your child is now drugged to the point where they are not themselves. They don't want to hear, you know, it's interfering with this part of life. So please listen to Dr. Grampiche that be working with someone who's not like that. Absolutely. And there's also this, you know, everybody probably you've heard the term placebo effect. And I want to talk about that a little bit because it happens a lot in autism, right? We are placebo effect is when you're so hopeful that a medication or something, a treatment, something will work, that even if it doesn't work, you truly see a positive impact. And that happens a lot. I mean, that happened, uh, well, over the course of my life, I've seen it with so many different things. This gentleman I was talking to yesterday was asking me if hyperbaric oxygen works. And it reminded me of this whole period of time when everyone was doing HBOT therapy. And we did at great expense, actually, you know, at that time it was like two and a half, three million dollars we invested in research studies where we tested the effects of hyperbaric oxygen and it, they did not have an effect on the symptoms of autism across hundreds of kids that we tested. But nevertheless, today, people are still doing it. At that point, it was very prevalent and it went down. That's what's called a placebo effect, where, where there's a strong belief that there's going to be a difference, there's going to be an improvement, a change, and so we keep doing it. But that's also very important because sometimes you will have your child on a medication that's absolutely not doing anything. And you, the physician will say, let's just keep increasing the dose. And because you as a parent are hopeful, you'll keep going on with it. So it's very hard and it's important to like, just try to stay very objective. Yeah, Joyce says, we actually have a medication management physician psychiatrist. Best thing we ever did was order the DNA testing to guide prescribing okay. medications. Very interesting. Uh, okay, yes. I want to get to, oh, go ahead. Can go I ahead. just quickly comment yeah. on that too? The DNA testing is awesome. I mean, you can, there's testing that can tell you what medications you will do well on, what medications you will not respond to. Problem is that the DNA testing itself has not yet been proven to be very accurate. So mm -hmm. just, you know, keep your mind on it as well, Joyce. Okay, there we go. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here. Don't forget, you can watch Ask Dr. Doreen live every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time on autismnetwork.com. We hope to see you there.